Hello, I'm Kaons and this is my submission for AGDQ 2023. I would like to submit 77 spatulas, no lag abuse, the main category for the game Spongebob Squarepants, Battle for Bikini Bottom, Rehydrated. I want to be very clear that this is the remake. Now, I've been running this game on and off for over two years and I'm currently second place in the leaderboard for 77 spatulas, no lag abuse. As you may know, the original Battle for Bikini Bottom has made several GDQ appearances in the past. But in 2020, a remake of the game with the subtitle Rehydrated released. It sure did. This game is far more broken than the original. This of course allows for a very unique and interesting speedrun. These two may be the same games at their core, but the runs are entirely incomparable. There are so many quirky tricks, glitches, and exploits that you use in the runs to get to the Chumpucket Lab as fast as possible. Almost every spatula animation is skipped in a unique way. The bowling power upgrade is used for ridiculous vertical movement. Sandy can do this. And who could forget the fact that when you unplug a controller during a load and back out of the menu, you're invincible? There are no spatula animations, and there is no voice acting. This game is weird. This game is often criticized for how buggy it is. But that's what I love about it. It provides a run experience unlike any other, which is why I'd love nothing more than to share the GDQ. Before we get into the submission run, I'd like to provide some background info. I run this game on PC. This run is done entirely on keyboard and mouse, though I do have a controller plugged in for the load error glitch, the one glitch that requires you to unplug a controller. While the runs are timed with a load remover for fair competition, my submission run here will show real time for the sake of showing how much time the run truly takes to complete. I am running the game off of an M2 drive, so at most, the time with loads will only be around a minute extra. My game is capped at 60 FPS, as is a leaderboard requirement for good reason. You go any higher and uh, the game can't handle itself. And of course, the category I'm running is called 77 Spatulas No Lag Abuse. Lag abuse is when you intentionally lag the game and cause stuff like this to happen. It's not my thing. My time here in the submission run is a 50-36 with loads, and a 49-01 without loads. The run also includes full live commentary from me. Enough talking, on with the run. I sincerely hope you do enjoy it. We're gonna have the cursor here in the top left corner of the screen, because we'll be warping out of the pineapple immediately. Skip. And now... Like that. Unlike in the OG game, you don't need to get the spatula inside the pineapple to progress. However, we will be getting it, but not yet. First, we're gonna go to Jellyfish Fields. And just head straight forward. We won't, however, be paying for the claim. We're just gonna go ahead and go around and climb Jellyfish Rock this way. Now, how do you do that? Well, go over here and take advantage of some unintended platforms. And some invisible surfaces. Just go here and go to the bungee sped. Now we're back to the bungee spat area, and we're just gonna keep climbing. You actually have to jump under an invisible wall there to jump on that platform. Obviously, this route I'm taking here is very unintentional. Go up here. There's a uh, sock right here. Climb a tree. And get up here. Alright, so here is the first spatula animation skip you do. So that is a spatula animation skip. You skip almost every spatula animation in the game. And each in a pretty unique way. There are different types of ways to skip the animations. It's, it's pretty neat. You'll see another one very shortly. So we're gonna get another sock here. We're gonna take that root of the, root of the slide. The route that gives you the stock. And we'll be needing 40 socks total. You trade 10 socks and you get a spatula. So here, in for a dilemma, we're not actually going to fight the robots. We're just going to do a uh, fancy jump up here to Patrick. And that is called a pause spatula animation skip. You pause on the frame and get the spatula. As you can see there, you also get... Ah, oh, I missed it, that one. But as you can see from the other one, you get a T-Pose. 
because the uh, game doesn't know what to do with you. Now we're warping back out and go to Squidward's house. Break that. We're just gonna break everything in this house while jumping at the same time so we get the sock and the spatula. Now that spatula animation was actually skipped because I triggered the, the uh, cutscene for the sock at the same time the spatula cutscene would have triggered. So the spatula cutscene cancelled out. Get the uh, sock on top of the pineapple there. And head over to downtown. Alright. So, we're gonna get the wheels. Number one in the bikini bottom scavenger hunt. Go over here to the uh, statues here. So, we're gonna be needing to get all these uh, shiny objects. These shiny objects are very important. And you'll see why soon. So, we're just gonna maximize as many as we can get. Go up here, get this spatula. I didn't break the first one because we're just gonna jump with the tiki head. It's a little optimization. Prevents you from having the bash. And you would be going there anyway. Go in this one. Obviously, this rhythm taken here in downtown is very unintentional, too. Get the suck. And just proceed onwards. And soon... We'll be going to play, and we'll be, uh... We're gonna play as Sandy right here. And Sandy is the most broken character in the game because she can do this. So this is called an infinite lasso hover. It is... ridiculous. You, uh, press the lasso button during the ledge grab animation, and you can fly forever and jump as high as you want. There are some things you have to do to control it, though. You have to, uh, land on surfaces before you do another jump. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in the air and you won't be able to go back down. So, there is a bit of work you have to do to actually keep it- keep this in a state that's actually usable. It's not just, like, keep going across. Right there, you see, I had to land in that little, uh... Whatever that thing's called, the little tube. We're gonna land here. We're gonna get the clam spat, but we're not gonna play for the, pay for the clam because the button for the cl clam is actually floating in mid-air. And it's invisible. So we just hit the invisible button there, I'm gonna go down here. Go in the box we opened. Jump up. And this is called a load spatula animation skip. You reload the game and get the spatula. And you're in the area you want, you want to be anyway, so it's like a 2-in-1 kind of thing. You reload the game, you're in the area you want to be, and you skip the spatula animation. So we're just gonna go up here, get the wheel, the shinier, the better. and get this sock and get the other wheel. Ooh. And now you're good? gonna see the infinite lasso hover with the with the uh, slide speed, which is one of my favorite things. So we're gonna rub against this wall here to decrease the height. Go over here to switch to the bus stop. If you're wondering why I didn't get the spatula animation there, it's because the bus- the character animation- the character, uh, switch animation is kind of like already present, and the game is not very good at handling two things at once, to put it in the uh, simplest of terms. This is the, uh, the lighthouse. You could uh, see him through there, through the uh, little wood, because there's like tiny holes you can see through, but... At this point, if you're on the game, you should have them memorize where they are. In the OG, you actually couldn't see through them. Get their shiny objects. Get the wheel. Alright. And now, we're gonna skip the animation by opening the door like we did in Jellyfish Fields. We're gonna head left. the sock up here. And now, this is why shinies are important. Open that, and I only have 69 left. That is not a lot. 
if I didn't go for one of those tikis, I would not have been able to get uh, that gate open. So that's why shiny objects, especially in the beginning, are really important. We'll be needing shinies later, but there in the beginning, it is very tight. So we're going to get that checkpoint there, but we're going to make sure not to get any of these other ones, because we want to actually load back to that area. So we're just going to go around the uh, checkpoint hitbox, for the most part. The hitboxes are kind of easy to avoid. If you know what you're doing. Alright. Okay. Jump on here. We're gonna fly here and land on the uh, debris right here. Once again, obviously an unintentional route. Get that sock. And now come back with the cruise bubble. We don't have a cruise bubble, so we're just gonna kick it. In the OG game, you actually need the crease bubble. In this one, you don't. So now, we're back where we want to be. We're gonna break these, uh, tiki... Tiki stacks. Three times in a row. And this is not for shiny object grinding, as you may think. This is actually the trick of the game into giving you the spatula where you break all the tikis with the bungee as Spongebob. I don't know why this works, but it does, so... We use it. So, one more time. Just break them all. And we gotta wait for the, uh, the shish tikis to, uh, fully disappear. Alright, and then we can go back here and switch characters and look at the spat. From Mr. Krabs. Aw oh, man, I missed it. The pause ones are kinda hard, they're frame perfect. We're gonna warp back to two. This is because we need the uh, wheels here. This is two more wheels we didn't get. But also because we want to be sandy. Because we're gonna be warping the jellyfish fields. Now, if you're familiar with the original game, you might be thinking, Wait a minute, you can't even be sandy in jellyfish fields, what are you talking about? Well, there are some warps in this game that are actually completely broken and forget to change your character to the intended one. So yeah, here is Sandy in Jellyfish Fields, and we take full advantage of this. We go up here, do the infinite lasso glitch, after getting that sock, of course. And then we go to the slide here. And we're gonna do the Jellyfish Caves. We're gonna do the caves by going around the caves. We gotta, uh, rub close to these, uh, rocks here, otherwise the, uh, hand will grab you. And we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna rub against the uh, rock here. And when I'm low enough, I'm gonna jump. And now I'm gonna push against the rocks just a little bit to maintain height. Might have been a little much, but we're fine. Uh, and we can just go in here. Go against the ceiling. Hit the crystal and get that. <laughs> you see the T-pose there? That actually was because I hit the wall, I think. And then we can just jump right back up. And go right over here. We're going to enter the gate, not because I want to actually progress with the level, but because we're going to need to uh, unlock the checkpoint here so we can warp back later. Alright. And now we're going to warp back to Patrick. Where we're going to walk forward. And the next area we're going to go to is the Poseidon. We're going to do the Robo Sandy fight. So we're just going to walk forward and trigger the uh, bubble buddy thing there. And we're going to get the uh, this spat from Patrick. To actually get 15 so we can open the door. This is called a spat walk. It's a type of spatula animation skip, I guess. Because you have full control of Spongebob, but you are still in the animation, so it's... It's kind of like a, a half animation skip. Like this is Robo Sandy here. Right Something I'm really appreciative of is like that... This fight, compared to the OG game, is a lot shorter. A the OG game, this fight just drags on and on and on. The animations are just way too slow. So, you can actually manipulate Robo Sandy into doing whatever you want. I don't know if it's like that in the original game, I don't know too much about it. But, in this game, for example, if I make her hit twice, then she'll do the pattern I want her to, rather than the attack. Which is, of course, useful for a speedrun, because relying on luck is lame. Like that. Get this. Open that. Wow, I've never seen such an and now phase three. The same thing. Except, just gonna do this. Oh man. 
That was a bit too early. One, two. And one more hit. And that's Robo Sandy. And now we're doing the tree dome. We're going to uh, bowl into this door and talk to Bubble Buddy. So, as you can see there, if you bowl into a door, you have free control over SpongeBob afterwards. It's neat, and you'll see it used again right after this. Because we're going to need it to uh, get the spatula. Like that. That's another way of sleeping spatula animations. So we're gonna walk forward here, get the suck. Get these, because we can. And now we're going to Mermelair. Oh man. Mermelair, with all the hard struts, is the hardest part of the run. So. This part probably requires the most focus. This first room isn't anything, but next room you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're actually going to intentionally die here, because it's a little bit faster you skip a cutscene. And you actually get ahead a little bit. So the climbing up, we're just going to jump here and do two jumps to get up like that. And now we're going to do that bowling thing again. We're going to walk back and get that. If you're wondering why we didn't do that before, it's because beating Poseidon actually unlocks the bowling ability. Alright, and we're gonna do that, and now, this sock right here is kind of weird. You gotta get in this electric pole, walk forward, hit that. The electric poles are really janky, so the fact that I did that as fast as I did is pretty good. Alright, then we're gonna bowl to the bus stop. If you actually- oh man, I messed it up. Oh, uh, you have to hit it at a certain angle, but if you bowl into the bus stop, you can have full control over Spongebob afterwards, but you have to actually bowl into the bus stop at a very certain angle. Alright, so here, we're gonna do the puzzle. Just kidding, we're gonna walk on the edge here. Very nice. We have to do all three of these, and intentionally dying is faster than going back and get another melon. I'm gonna get this, and do the last one. Like that. Alright, hopefully we can spat walk here. I'm in a setup. Like that. <laughs> See, now I'm spat walking this Patrick. And now, this is one of the hardest tricks in the run. It's called Clam Skip, so I'm not gonna talk for it, I'm just gonna do it. I'll talk after. Alright, just like that, we got it. That is called Clam Skip. You do a damage boost again on top of this slide. It's very janky and a bit specific, but. It's worth it, because it saves around, like, 15 seconds, if I recall correctly. Compared to a, a slower method, I think in total it should save around, like, 30 if you're doing, like, the intended way. Of actually paying the claim and doing all that. We're doing Towers of Power, just go clockwise. Alright, Barnacle Boy. A little spat walk here. Doesn't bring it that far, but it's faster than just getting it. I'm gonna go down here and do this. And now we're gonna change back into SpongeBob because you're not intended to be Patrick in this area. And this is the uh, security tunnel room. You actually skip the security tunnels by doing fancy jumps, and this is called a VBB. You shoot a bowling ball, you get it stuck, and you can jump on it and get a lot of height. So yeah, that's the security tunnels. This room should normally be a lot longer, but there's a speedrun. And we're gonna bowl into this gate and get the spat. And that was actually gold security tunnel. Alright, and now this is what everyone hates. Ballroom skip. So, you hit this, and then you hit the ball. And you hit the uh, little trigger there to get the ball. And now, this is Ballroom Skip. It's very tight, and it requires pause buffers, and it's really lame. Alright, so here we go. Hopefully we get it. That might get it. And we got the first try. Let's go. Alright, that is Ballroom. And now we do this. Get that. 
All right, I'm very glad I got that first try, all right? So now is a load error glitch for the first time. You reload the game, unplug your controller, wait for the menu to come back, back out, and you can grab spatulas without the animations. But you can do more than that, and you're about to witness that very soon. Gotta plug the controller back in, though. All right, now it's back. All right, bowl into this. Dock here and get that. Then we're gonna get two spatulas in concession. Just like that. All right, and now we're going to the prawn battle. Prawn. The shrimp. Where we're gonna do a loader glitch. Why? Well, you'll see. Plug. Reconnect. Yeah. During the low there estate, you're also invincible. It's very weird. This is the only real use for it that's actually fast. Because you just go here and jump over these immediately. Oh, come on. Actually gonna break some of these just for the shinies. Alright. Jump, jump. Jump, jump. Jump, jump. Jump, jump. Jump, jump. Okay. And that is that. And now, we're gonna go to Goo Lagoon. So, Goo Lagoon is a bit of a more chill part of the run. Though there are some things I really don't like about it. But we'll get to it. The beginning isn't so bad. So, Goo Lagoon, we're gonna jump this rock here and get up here in an unintended fashion to uh, skip a cutscene. We're gonna stay on the edge here. Getting that, getting here. We're gonna go around. Activate that just for the uh, shinies. Then go down here and talk to Puff. Oh, no. Get up here. Get that suck. Alright. Now we're just making it to the end here. The end of the room. Just gonna jump here, jump. And we're gonna get this uh, sock up here. Not by doing it the intended way, we're gonna get stuck here in the sandcastle. Okay, uh, this jump is a little bit janky. Like that, and then get up here. Do a long enough jump so we skip the uh, bubble buddy interaction cutscene. Open here. And get up here. Not the intended way, but by doing a jump, which skips a ton, by the way. Get that checkpoint, and we're gonna do a VBB here to get up here. Uh, this is a little bit tricky. A little bit. Alright, there we go. Go down here, get the sock. And do a jump right there, and get up here. Get the sock, break those, stand right on this clam around here, and shoot it right around here. This should hit a button down there that activates a special. It missed. It happens. This is to trigger a uh, Patrick Challenge spatula, but you can just do it like this, and I keep missing. Oh, no, I didn't miss. I was... All right. Kind of unfortunate, but whatever, it's okay. It happens. We're gonna get this. And we're about to do another, uh, reload. Back out. And now we're gonna climb it this way. If I make that jump, I didn't make it. There is a easy backup. Just wait for it to come back up and then bash and slam. Like this. Alright, like that. Nice. You see, Gulagoon is a little bit annoying, but now we're going to the uh, most annoying part, the caves. You have to be absolutely perfect in the caves. You lose a small amount of time, and the cycle is messed up. So, we gotta focus here a little bit. We go on here, change the camera, jump down here, quickly get the sock and go back up. And now quickly jump up here, like that. Alright, we're good. We're good. That's the hard part at the beginning there. Being fast enough to uh, have the water not go down. And then we can go over here, get the sock. And once again, this is not how you're supposed to be doing the cave section. The cave section in actual gameplay is a lot longer. But you're pretty much skipping everything here. And we can go over here. 
we're gonna do a bowl here. And then blindly get that spatula. It's a little bit tight, but we got it. So we're gonna go over here. Not trigger the checkpoint there. We used to trigger the checkpoint, but apparently it is one second faster not to. Shout out to Gordo for discovering that. Little optimizations are always nice. Alright, so we go ahead here and go into the box. That was an intentional death, of course. It was just to uh, open that box over there. And... We're gonna break this, do the bumper boats, and just continue onwards. Get up here. Go in these tents. Alright, and we're gonna go over here and get the spatula underneath. Which is not Harry supposed to be doing this. He's supposed to use Patrick and get the ice and all that. And we're gonna do a reload. Like that. You get up here, go around, now we're doing the bungee. We're not paying for the climb, we're just climbing the tower. Because you can jump on almost anything in this game. Alright, now we're gonna go down, get this, and warp back. We're gonna claim the, uh, the spat for, uh, Clearing the bumper boats. You need to be Patrick for that. Alright, and now we're gonna do Goolagoon CCA. So what is CCA? CCA is Collect Counter Abuse. For some reason, if you warp to somewhere where you already have a lot of collectibles, then you go back to an area where you didn't even get any collectibles, the game will think you got the collectibles in that area and will give you the spad. So Mrs. Puff is all like, well done! Thanks for saving the children, but you did not save the children, because they're floating right behind me. It, it's really ridiculous. I don't know how that mistake made it through and it never ever got patched out, because it is pretty huge and you can accidentally get that. I have accidentally gotten that during a casual playthrough. Uh, but it, it's nice for speedruns, I guess. It's pretty weird. It still amazes me that that happened, because it's, it's such a big bug. So we're gonna get this, and uh, we're gonna warp right back to uh, Miss Puff over here. And now, as you can see from the splits, we're gonna do a 6.6k grind. In 100%, you have to actually grind for 11 minutes, because you need a lot of shinies to uh, buy all the shiny spats from Mr. Krabs. Alright. So we're gonna break this, and we're gonna trigger an invisible checkpoint that's right up here, and then we can walk back and die intentionally. So yeah, as you can see, I have 3k, we gotta make it up to 6.6k. In 100%, you gotta get the 50k, but thankfully we're not doing 100%. So it's only a couple uh, times you gotta do this. Not a huge deal. Alright. 4.5. Five point one, two. Like a spring breeze. Five point eight. I think one more time should be good. I feel like a new sponge. Oh man, I almost died there. And then we get to climb this. And now, we're gonna go over here. And we're gonna continue climbing jellyfish fields in unintended ways. We go up here. And get this bat right over here. Alright. So, next up, we're going to King Jellyfish, where we're gonna skip King Jellyfish. But before we do that, we actually have to get the spatula in downtown. The wheels that we never claimed yet. I'm doing it now because we're actually gonna need to do a CCA to uh, skip King Jellyfish and actually get the spat for it. So go back. So this actually puts the game in a CCA state. So you go up here. Skip. Intentionally get hit. And go over here. 
Okay, that is a bit of a janky trick, but thankfully we got it, and thankfully we didn't get hit by those lasers. Alright. So yeah, that's King Jellyfish Skip. If you are, do a slam on the goo, you can actually get a certain amount of height depending on the, uh... Depending on, uh... What am I gonna say here? The, uh... The timing of the slam. Aw, oh, man. Missed the pause there, but it's fine. We're gonna warp back to Jellyfish 1. And get the, uh, spatula for King Jellyfish. Alright, that was a bit slow, but it's fine. And now we're gonna get the, uh, spatula on top of Shady Shoals. So, we're gonna warp back to 5 and do this. Get the ball here. Okay, that was a bit bad. Uh, we're gonna go back here and try it again. Hit this. Get up here. And reload the game. And now, we're gonna go to Dream. Dream is next. But we're not gonna fight Robo Patrick. What we're gonna do here is do a tech storage. We're gonna get tech storage. So, you get a bowl and talk to an NPC in the same frame. And that puts you in this weird state over here. We're gonna go out of bounds, wait for the hand to grab us. And then when the hand fully comes back in, we're gonna... ...match through the uh, text and jump right out. And now we're out of bounds. Now we're gonna go over here and climb to Hub 3. The uh, third hub area. And just go back in. And get a sock here. Oh man, that was an accident. And we're gonna VBB right here. Go up. Get the health upgrade. Go around. Land in the E of the chum bucket. Go up. 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 And we're back. Yes, this is how you go to Hub 3. You actually don't do RoboPad at all unless you're doing a 100% run. Which, honestly, I think is kind of good. It's a bit of a long fight. And now we're doing Dream. So we're just going to jump right up here. Instead of doing all that with the uh, blocks over there. First, we're going to go to, a, we're gonna go to uh, Squidward's Dream. You go around here. And just slide right off. And land the uh, trampoline. And land that one too. And get the top of Squid's house. And now we're gonna enter Squid's house. Skip the text. And this is Squid's dream. We don't do it intentionally. We do a bit of a skip right here with the uh, trumpet. That jump is kind of hard, but I've been getting a little bit more consistent at it. And we go over here, and get the uh, sock right up here, wait for this uh, tambourine to come back, and slam. And yeah, that's that's the skips we do here for Squidward's Dream. Makes it a lot quicker. Jump on the notes for the rest of it and do it the intended way. Jump on here. Get on. Boom. Oh, that was a bit janky. We're fine, though. Get up here. Just gotta be careful. And now... We're doing another pretty hard trick. It's called Oil Skip. We're gonna warp back to one and we're gonna do a load air glitch instantly. This is actually audio cue based, so I gotta really listen up here. We're gonna get this bad first before the animation. And then we're gonna go over here. Trigger the robot, and we're gonna jump right up here and wait for the sound. And we're gonna jump forward, and get hit by the oil, and do that. It's pretty awesome. I actually was the one to find out that if you do it with the uh, low air glitch intact, it actually makes it a lot easier. This trick was a lot harder back in the day, but it's quite a bit easier now with that, which is great. And now we're going to Sandy's Dream. So Sandy's Dream is kind of cool. It, in, it contains uh, infinite lasso, of course. Because why wouldn't it? Go over here and slide right off and go to the acorn spat immediately. We're going to jump up during the uh, hand grab and get it and then come back. Alright, jump up here. Get that. Go over here. 
And we're gonna do the other spat here in Sandy's Dream. Land. But we're not gonna go over there instantly. We're gonna actually, uh, decrease our height a little bit and descend by rubbing against the bottom of the slide. And we're gonna shoot over here. And just go across. This hat does not have collision, by the way, so no need to worry about that. And then we can jump up. And descend. Gotta hit this, uh, thing here first. It gets rid of some of the robots, but my angle there was kind of bad. Uh, I gotta land. Go over here. This robot's probably gonna hit me, but it's fine. We just descend. And yeah, that's Sandy's dream. It is a bit difficult to do that part fast. You gotta be kind of... It's a bit precise. And now we're going to rock bottom. Aw, oh, man, I missed it. <laughs> it's whatever. Up the five. Time for rock bottom. Rock bottom's kind of cool. So... We're actually gonna go low there immediately. This uh, skips a couple of cutscenes, a couple of brief cutscenes, and um, allows you to get the uh, spatula up here without having to buffer, which is nice. Another thing, uh, if you're in the low there estate, there's no voice acting, which is why SpongeBob is silent. I'm gonna break that. Get up here. Let's go across. Warp the three. All right. So now it's time for another VBB. Where we gotta make it across over here. Go over here like this with the sponge ball and jump out of here. Open that box. You gotta make sure to open that box. Go over here and do a VBB. This one's a little bit tight. It's kind of tricky. Uh, this one's a bit annoying. I'm not gonna lie. Alright, there we go, we got it. Then we just enter here, and we're immediately gonna hold left and escape, because we will get the spatula immediately. And then we can just warp right out of there, and warp back to three. Where we're gonna do the slide. <clears throat> Quote unquote, we're gonna do the slide. We're gonna do the slide, but we're not gonna actually even go on the slide at all. We're gonna get this sock, we're gonna go down here. Oh man, I messed that up. I, uh, the sponge ball is a bit janky and sometimes hard to control. Which, which is great. It's fine, though. I'm gonna go over here. With the sponge ball. Get this sock down here. Break this. I'm gonna open the box here. And it'll bring us to the other box. We I'm gonna hit this button right there with a bowl. Go back in here. And yeah, that's how you do the slides. Great. And we can reload and get that. And now we're doing the museum. The museum is actually done entirely as Spongebob, no Sandy involved. A relatively new strat. Because there's a way to uh, go past the uh, lasers. So, we're gonna go down here. Go over here. And line Spongebob up right with this wall right here. And then uh, move the camera a little bit to the left. Make that plaque disappear. And then hold forward and press D as soon as you hit the lasers. Alright. Now we're in. And now we're just gonna go through the rest of the museum. Ah, uh, man. I missed the cycle. That's fine, though. Alright. Wait for the wheel to come back. Higher, rather. And then we can actually skip the lasers just by hugging the wall there. It's a bit weird. Go over here. Ah, oh, man. I accidentally triggered that cutscene. You get, you want to avoid that, but if you get it, it's not too big of a deal. Alright, and now we're going to warp to five. We're going to do the, uh, the spat is Sandy. We're going to come over here. Bowl against the bus stop. Walk forward. And go over here. 
uh, land, go in the little Texas thing and go up. And go over here, grab this. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> I got so fast, couldn't even pause. Alright. And now we're gonna do the uh, CCA here for downtown. Where we, uh, quote-unquote, collected the art. But we did not. Alright, and now we're gonna go to Kelp Forest. Kelp Forest is one of my favorite levels casually. In the speedrun, you completely cheese it. It is one of the fastest worlds. It is ridiculous. I missed a sponge ball. Alright, so... We actually do Kelp Forest backwards. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you'll see. All you have to do is go over here. And do some weird jumps. Get up here, and that's it. Oh, man. I messed up. I was trying to go so fast just to prove my point. Alright, we're gonna go here. Do this. Go up. And that's it. Just enter the gate like that. It's great. Alright, so this is the mermaid main slide. We just intentionally fall off here. Go back and into the box. We're gonna change characters. But then we're actually gonna change it back to Spongebob. I don't know why this is required, but it's part of the glitch. If you thought the rock bottom slide was bad, wait until you see how we do this one. We go here. And then walk back to the end. And we, we beat the slide! That was it, guys! Alright, then we uh, reload the game. Get sped. Talk to Mermaid Man, and get this bet. Boom. So yeah, guys, as you can see, this is a spat after spat after spat. We already got three spats here. Kelp Forest is ridiculous. Oh, okay, that was an accident. You're not supposed to trigger the barnacle boy. <laughs> but Kelp Forest is ridiculous. It is so fast, because obviously you're doing it wrong. And here it is, the fourth spat, like that. Gonna go over here, open the box. Go around. This is probably the slowest spat here. There's, there's always gonna be one, right? Go in the box here, because it's a little bit faster than going around, actually. Alright, and now we're gonna warp the three. Walk backwards. Alright. And are you ready for the next bet? Yeah, very well deserved. Alright, now we're gonna do the CCA here for downtown. Unfortunately, you can't do the CCA for the other collectible spat. In Kelp Forest. I think I said downtown for CCA. There's a Kelp Forest CCA, of course, but just go to downtown. Um, there are actually two collectible spets in, the uh, in Kelp Forest. There's the campers and the crystals. You can only do the, uh, campers for some reason, which is unfortunate, but it's kind of whatever. And we just go over here, get the sock up here. It's another sock here from bowling these tikis. All right. Talk to Miss Buff. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> I got the pause and they unpaused. It happens a lot. Alright, next, we're gonna go to Sand Mountain. Sand Mountain. We're only gonna do one of the slides. The Larry one. Oh, not Larry. Miss Puff, actually. But we're gonna do the uh, bungee first. Okay, climb up here. Open that. That's one of the things we need the uh, shinies for. You just warp right back there. And walk backwards. Get the spat up here and reload. Alright, now we're gonna go around and we're actually gonna duplicate the sock here. Bowl here, stand right here. Wait for the cutscene to get. So. For some reason, that sock in particular, the cutscene sock and the actual sock are two different socks. So if you get the sock and a cutscene, it actually counts as a completely different sock. There are other cutscene socks, but for some reason, 
Only that one actually counts as a different one. It, it's really bizarre. I don't know why that is. So we're gonna do the uh, slide here. Go, the other socks we need. Actually, there is one more sock in Dutchman's, but we're not there yet. Go around. Break those tiggies. Go around here. Break that. Just optimize the amount of shiny objects we have. Get the sock up here. See, we have 29. There's one more we need in uh, Dutchman's. Alright. Okay, this is the uh, last load air glitch we do, just to get two spats really fast consecutively. Like this. Alright, now we're going to Dutchman's. We actually need to replug the controller because uh, there's no more loader glitches. And we're just gonna head straight to Dutchman's. Okay. We're gonna skip a cutscene by going around the trigger. Like this. So this uh, first spat here in Dutchman's is called Trick Shot because it is a trick shot. You're supposed to hit it with the cruise bubble, but if you're good enough, you can actually hit it with the bowl. The bubble bowl. You actually just need a little bit of a visual cue in the setup. So we just go down here. Do something like this, and I think that should hit it. Like that. There we go. It's great. I love that. And then we go down here. Back out and get that. And now, we're gonna do the invisible slide. Yes, uh, there is an invisible slide up here. It's kind of weird. It's because, like, it's actually, like, the slide is always there. It's supposed to unlock, like, a path intentionally, I think. But the, the slide that you unlock is actually there the whole time. It's just invisible. It's kind of weird. I, I guess they uh, just exp didn't expect like casual players to uh, try that, but yeah, it's certainly there. All right. Up. Now we're gonna go back over here, unintentional, of course. Gonna go around here, get the sock in here, the last one. Patrick needs to do laundry. All right, we go up here. Reload the game after getting that other checkpoint. Just a little bit faster. Faster way of getting up. Gonna go around. Alright. And now, we're gonna do the uh, bungee spat over here, which we needed 2,700 shiny objects to get. We're, we're good in shiny objects. By this point, you should have 5,700, and we have more. Alright, so we're gonna go down here and get that, and we're gonna warp the five. Alright, screw jumps. So, the intended way of doing this is doing some like weird like obstacle course type kind of thing over there, with the ships, but you can actually just jump on the window here, and jump on the screws. It's pretty funny. It's actually a lot easier than doing that stuff over there. I'm gonna bowl and get that. Going to go around the uh, Mr. Krabs cutscene sugar. Gonna go over here. Bowl on that. Get up here. Get that. Do a VBB right here. Jump on the ball. Go up here. Get stuck right there. Gonna do another VBB. This one's kind of tight. But we got it. Ah, oh, no, we didn't. That was too short. There we go. All right, and now cannons, cannons, the last one here. All right, and now we're gonna warp back to five in Bikini Bottom, where we're gonna get our last spat from 
Mr. Krabs here. Oh, we forget the direction there. Talk to him. And now we're going to do a spat walk here. We're going to get the ball. Yeah, that is wacky, right? All right, now we're going to go over here and get the remaining spatulas from Patrick. There are three. Alright, and now we're gonna warp the chum bucket. The run is almost over. We're going to the chum bucket lab. Alright. The last and the final spat is right in here. Just gonna go over here and do a little bash. And reload the game it's a little bit faster. Alright. Here we are. So, the final boss. Walk off and shoot the crease bubble into this button. Walk forward over this line and shoot Plankton immediately. Now what that does is it disables him, alright? Now he won't shoot me for the rest of the time. I don't know why that works, but it does, and it's very useful. So that's a double hit right there. You just have to hit the uh, button, the uh, crease bubble in a certain spot. Hopefully we get the other, the other double hit, which is right here. Like that. We got both double hits. This is nice. You can go over here, shoot the bubble right here. And the final bubble, right here. Boom. Alright, phase two. Okay. So, now we're inside the, uh, giant Robo Spongebob thing. We're gonna hit these, go down here. We're actually jumping at this angle first and jumping down just to avoid a death trigger. We're gonna go over here, break this, jump on here. Alright, next, we need to land on the trampoline and cruise bubble at the same time. So. Like that. And we shoot the cruise bubble right through here. And now we're going to walk off and shoot the cruise bubble. And get it right through here. And we're going to die and respawn. Finally, hold the cruise bubble. Now around here, we release and shoot it in here. Nice. Okay. We're gonna go down here. Go over here. Break the reactor. Go over here. Jump down. The little dude up here. Jump up. Cruise bubble. And boom, that is the run, and that was actually Gold Phase 2, which is pretty cool. Alright, so, that was Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated 77 Spatulas No Lag Abuse. That is a mouthful. Alright, I really hope you enjoyed this run. I enjoyed this run a lot, that's why I've been playing it for over two years. As you can see here, we have a Robo Spongebob here. Knocking them all out. Oh man. That was pretty good. That was a pretty good run. Now, if you're curious what the uh, time is in real time, we'll check that right now. Yeah, I meant to say game time. So that was a 4901, which is which is great. That's a pretty good run. And that was a, a little, like almost a minute worse than my PB, which is still not bad. It's a really good run. I'm really happy with how that turned out. So yeah, that is that. So the run is 4901 in game time. And in real time, that is 5036. So, that is the run, and now we're in the credits area right here. For some reason, we can actually cruise bubble. And yeah, that is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Pikachu Bottom Rehydrated 77 Spatulas, No Lag Abuse. Alright, so, I hope you enjoyed this run. It shines. You heard SpongeBob. It shines. <laughs>